Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Show and Tell show. So we are back. And I know you're expecting to hear about the pretty dresses in our collection, but we had some technical difficulties last week that totally fall on my end. Um, so we're going to have to redo that episode. But at the end, we did it. We all got together and talked about our beautiful dresses, but we didn't get to share it with all of our fans. So we're going to come back and redo that one so nobody misses out on some of the amazing things we have in our collection. Our challenge that was thrown out actually to us by Jan was railway. So we're going to do railway today and we're going to come back tomorrow with some pretty dresses from the collection. But let's get on to railway. And since you threw out that challenge, Jan, over at Penetang, yes. Museum, show us what you got. Okay, so I'm just going to begin by showing you um, a picture. This is not our artifact, but it's just a picture of the Penetang Wachine Railway Station. And you'll notice on the building that our town name has been abbreviated to just Penetang because there wasn't enough room on the building to accommodate the whole long name. So that's likely where people started just referring to us as Penetang. So the artifact that I have for us today is actually a little more clumsy than I thought it was going to be, so bear with me. It looks a whole lot smaller when it's on exhibit than on my desk, <laughs> but anyway. So it's a lamp, and it's the only remaining artifact from the Penetanguishing Railway oh. Station. And the Penetang line went from Penetanguishing to Allendale and then picked up from the city there on. So on our little, our big lamp here, there are a couple of holes here that we spotted on both sides. So we're assuming because of the circular formation and the fact that there's these holes, something else was mounted on here, likely advertising of some kind, but unfortunately we don't know what that would be. So the, um, the railway came to town in 1879 and initially it was the major mode of transportation for um, the mills. So the McGibbons, the Becks and the Grops each had their own spur line going into their yards. Um, it was very instrumental in the prospering of these mills as well as other manufacturers who were popping up around town. We also had the Beatty Foundry and the Back Box Factory and the Grew Boat Company that each yep. had their own line as well joining into the major line. Um, however, shortly after that, it did become quickly a major route for the tourists to arrive to this area. Uh, we did have a lot of resorts and cottages, um, including our own Penetanguishing Hotel, that people would, re uh, would arrive on the train to stay at these uh, various places. Um, I thought it was a little interesting fact about the railway is that of course, the engines were wood burning mm -hmm. and a lot of the line went through um, empty fields and through bush. And because of the wood burning engine, loose embers would often start bush fires. So that was a bit of a hazard when they, uh, when they were running through these areas. As well, uh, cattle at first were being, farmers were complaining because cows were being killed on the lines. So the railway company did install some like just like snake rail fencing in these areas to keep the cattle from wandering on to the rails. So by the 1950s, uh, the railway schedule had dwindled down to about three round trips per week instead of several per day as the road became more and more popular with the completion of Highway 400. And by 1969, the line from Elmville to Penetanguishene uh, was closed down. And by 1972, the CNR began to dismantle the rail lines. Of course, now we have these wonderful trails that we can ride your bike, walk through, whatever, where the old uh, lines used to be. Yeah. But I think some people still miss the fact that you can't come from the city by train anymore. I think train is beginning to be revived a little bit. There is talk of um, adding more additional um, rails in this area. So I think it's missed. Yeah, you know, the whole idea of public transportation, you know, cause now we have the, I, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Simcoe County has the bus routes now. 
So Midland to Barry. Yes. You know, they're really, they're, they're building out. Um, and I know when they introduced the go yeah. train, you know, back, you know, from Allendale down to the city, like that is really well received. Lots of people use, yes. I've used it instead of driving to the city. Uh, it's been yes. awesome, right? Oh, I think so too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be nice to, it's not just nice to see it. I think it's just better to see it too. Because I don't I, know, last time I you drove the 400, yeah. it's awful. Yeah, I know. There isn't anything relaxing about that at all. No, no, no. no. And um, I myself would love to take the train out west and back. I think oh. it'd be a fantastic trip. Yeah, yeah. Train yeah. travel. There's nothing like train travel because you're you're speedy, but there's no traffic, and you're just absolutely taking in the landscape. Right? It's that's uh, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More trains, more trains. Let's have more trains. Yes. What do we have, Genevieve? Yes. All right, oh, I've got something. Um, you've probably all heard of the Canadian National Railway and the Canadian Pacific Railway, perhaps even the GTR, but have you heard of the Midland Terminal Railway? Probably not. Uh, the Midland Terminal Railway was actually just a spur line that ran from, I've got a map here, from Midland. Ah! It ran from over here. This is really crummy, sorry. Uh, from the Canada Iron Furnace Company's property across right. Midland Bay. The downtown area is right he oh, here. Sorry. Um, this is King Street right here, down there. But the, uh, so this line ran around the bay, past the elevator, and then over to the harbor and it was really it was founded by it was formed by the midland uh the canada iron furnace company here are some images of their plant on the other side of midland bay uh this came to town in 1900 and they formed the midland terminal railway in 1903 and uh, I was really excited to find this a uh, few months ago when I was going through all those legal documents that I've been trotting out once in a while. Uh, the specifications uh, for the uh, uh, switching uh, locomotive and we've got a photograph there. We do have uh, a few copies of photographs in the collection of the um, uh, a different switcher in use, pulling um, a cart of slag, but this is the only photograph I've ever seen of the, the locomotive itself. I was just so excited to find it. Um, the, eventually the Midland Terminal Railway uh, was, I guess, incorporated into the Midland Simcoe Railway, and that's got a whole other history I won't go into, but yeah. There we go, the Midland Terminal Railway. There's not a lot of information on it. So uh, anyway, it's hard to look up. <laughs> so the, hard to Google it later on. The iron company you're speaking of, is that it was located where the new subdivision is? Yeah. Along Sunnyside? Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think, yeah, for a long time, one of the original buildings was being used yeah. as the sales center. So I don't know yeah. whether it's still there now they're putting in the other side or not. I haven't noticed in a while. Uh, I don't know. I was actually yeah. going to go over there and check it out. Yeah, the family, the Drummond family, uh, they they had other smelters in Ontario and Quebec, and they decided to open this one here in Midland. And then they burnt, uh, built, sorry, further up the hill, they burnt, uh, built uh, the Georgian Lodge, their house, which stood, I think, it right. was 1982 or 1981 when it uh, when it burned down. But the wall, yeah, the stone mm. wall is still there. The Drummond Wall, yeah, the yeah, Drummond Wall, yeah, which is a heritage site. The Drummond Wall it now, is. yeah, that's right. I don't know if the chimney still stood. I know when my family moved here in 1981, and I remember driving by on the way uh, to Midland, and you can see the chimney in the. Uh, uh, 
in the forest, in the clearing in the forest, and, but uh, gradually the forest has ah. grown in, so I don't know if the chimney is still standing. Yeah, I don't know. Me neither. Well, and we have a museum town plaque there where you can go and read about it and scan with your phone. And Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's one of the sites we did was the Drummond Wall. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, like, traveling around, I think that's our challenge for next week because we've had this subject come up, and I think it's a confusing thing I know it is for me when I do like administrative stuff for the museum it's like what do you do well actually we're here to preserve heritage you know that's our main job we're here to save the old things but we can't do that without tourism mm. so let's do the subject of tourism because I think we probably have some pretty neat tourism related things in our collection uh, yep, things, yeah. things that no longer exist. Uh, yeah. So yeah, so let's throw that out as a challenge. Tourism good for one. Simcoe for next week. How about that? Sounds good. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we will be back next week with tourism, and we're coming back tomorrow to catch up on the dresses <laughs> because we brought up some <laughs> fabulous dresses and had some fabulous discussions and saw some neat things, and we don't want our fan base to miss out. <laughs> Okay, so we'll see everybody <laughs> next week or tomorrow if you find us with our dresses. See ya. Hey, bye. Bye. Bye.